Hey guys, it's Dane at Zim's Guitars, and this guitar just came into my shop, and this is a 2001 Epiphone Slasher, and so I'm going to put some new strings on it, and we'll do a little setup on it, and we'll get this thing playing real nice, so help me out, here we go. Okay, let's snug these down. So this is an Epiphone Slasher. So it's kind of a mix-up between a uh, like an Explorer and even a Firebird. It looks like a Firebird type of shape. And so you've got the two pickups, and they have the Epiphone logo on, on each pickup, which I think is really cool. you got your speed knobs and a three-way toggle switch, and it's string through the body, so the bridge assembly just sets right here on top. And uh, the strings come through the back of the guitar. And uh, you got your Epiphone made in Korea. Rosewood neck, really cool headstock design with the old school Epiphone logo on there. Um, I think I'll put a set of 10 gauge strings on this one. All right, so in 2001, they made 1,000 of these Epiphone slashers. 800 of them look just exactly like this one, but 200 of them were called Slasher FXs, and they had a third knob and two toggle switches so it actually had built-in distortion and chorus so it had two little toggle switches that you could turn on and off to turn your distortion on or to turn your chorus on and the third knob here was to turn the gain up on the distortion so and it was called an Epiphone Slasher FX so today's string choice Ernie Ball 10 through 46 Regular slinkies. This is a Gibson scale length. So I think 10 gauge works just fine on the Gibson stuff. So let me show you real quick the scale length. Got my tape measure out here. And it looks like 25 and a half. So, you know what? Honestly, I think Gibson scale length is 24 and 3 quarters, right? So this is more of a Strat, Fender Strat scale length. How weird is that? Anyhow, we're going to put 10s on her anyhow. And like I said, it's this string through the body. Once I get one string into place, then the bridge will stay in place. It does have a good little scratch right here that um, doesn't really look like the paint scratched, but it's kind of dented, which is unfortunate. You have a really cool guitar and it's got a it's got a scratch in it like that. Okay.
back of the neck feels kind of rough, kind of dirty. I'm just going to take some Scotch Brite pad and I'm just going to lightly go over some of this. I can see where there was a sticker, the residue of it right there. So I'm going to clean that off. Just got a little Windex. Yeah, my tuners are looking kind of uh, kind of cruddy there too. I probably should have cleaned those off a little bit better. Get a little bit of glue be gone. Put a little bit of that on the rack. This was just one of the old stickers that said made in Korea or whatever it said. But then, um, just to make the, the playability of this guitar feel really smooth and fast, I just hit it with a little tiny bit of this. Not going to take the finish off. Don't want to do that. Just going to kind of get the top layer of dirt off of there, right? Definitely don't do this if you've got any kind of a finish that you're trying to protect. But on that, it should be fine. Then we'll put a little bit of some furniture polish on a rag. And we'll just kind of keep cleaning that up off of there a little bit. That's still kind of rough, but uh, I can just kind of feel the grain. So I'm going to raise the action just a little tiny bit by raising this bridge. Slotted screwdriver. Raise that just that little tiny bit. All right, so I'm just gonna check the neck relief and uh, this is a long scale gauge right here. And so how weird is this that this is a long scale guitar? Okay, I'm gonna lay that right there. Let's see what we've got here. That's tight. That's tight. This is pretty flat. Okay, so I'm just going to tune this thing up and uh, check the intonation. I got my snark tuner here on the headstock. Battery's going dead in it. So I just kind of hold my finger on the A string and just kind of stretch it out a little bit. There we go. Let's go ahead and stretch the D string out a little bit. There's my G string. You don't want to, you got to be very careful when you get to these the G string, the B string, and the, and the E string because they will break. You don't really stretch them too much. You'll break those things, especially 9 gauge. These again are 10s. And be very careful. Last thing you want to do is break a string. Okay, so so to check the intonation on this low E string, I'm just going to hold it down at the 12th fret and we'll see what it's saying on the tuner and it's saying that it's a little bit flat. That looks pretty darn close that time. Tune, try my A string. You, Press down at the 12th fret. 
and that thing looked good. It came right up on the tuner. I wish I could show you the tuner at the same time. Good, this thing looks, uh, oh, a little tiny bit sharp on this uh, G-string. So when it's sharp, you want to push it back just a little bit, and that takes a straight screwdriver. So let me see what I have. I'm sitting down on the job today. See if I can run this back just a little. Okay, I moved that saddle back a little bit. Let's try the G now. Tune it to pitch, hit the 12th fret. There it is. Perfect. My B string. and I will play it for a little bit for you guys. Hey guys, so we got Jacob down here. He's going to play this thing for us. Here we go. Man, sounds great. How's it play? It's, it's not too bad, huh? It's it does that spank thing with the Said Epiphone, and I went, okay. Do you want to plug your band? Uh, which one? Uh, check Anyone? out Apex Alpha. We just dropped a new EP called Time Lapse. It's a little concept story thing. It's really cool with a full length to follow. Hopefully later this year. Apex Thank Alpha. Apex Alpha. Thank you, man. Appreciate Thank you. you. Take us out with something.